Good afternoon everyone. So welcome to buy fun with Shruti. So today we will be discussing about the process of sericulture. So here you are able to see three days old newts. So in order to start explaining you the sericulture process, I thought of showing you the life cycle of the silk moth first and then we will go into the process of sericulture. So here you are observing one week old silk worms. See, first of all, when the silk moth is laying an egg, the egg hatches and it will form newts. And these newts are completely different from the adult caterpillar or the silk worm. Okay, so why is it like that? Because the these worms, they'll be undergoing continuous changes in their body. Almost four mouths, they'll be happening. What is, what is a mould? Mould or metamorphosis is nothing but a change in their entire body. Right? So by the ninth day, the worms look something like this and they are still continuously feeding on the mulberry leaves. And uh, if at all you have a doubt as if uh, they eat only mulberry leaves, it depends on the type of the silk worm. So tusser silk generally feeds on oak leaves. So and so on and so forth. Different silk worms feed on different types of leaves and give us different types of silk. Right? So by the time the silk worm reaches three weeks old, uh, there will be complete change in the body when compared to that of a newt. So you can see the completely grown three week old silk worms here. They are feeding constantly on the mulberry leaves because they are going to sleep for a long time almost for one month. Right? So these caterpillars after they are 3.5 weeks old and uh, they will be more and more feeding on the mulberry leaves keeping on excreting at the same time right and they'll be building up so much of a reserve source of energy so that after a few days they are going to form their own cocoons and they are going to rest in them for a long time right so here you can see a fully grown four week old that means it is around 28 days and the time of cocoon formation is rapidly approaching Here you can see the cocoon process uh, already started. In the formation of the cocoon process, these silk worms generally they spin their mouth from side by side like this. Then they will be releasing the silk fiber and the formed silk fiber is very delicate and upon exposure to air it becomes hard. So on the continuous process of weaving the silk, the silk moth a silk worm uh, weaves the silk thread so uh, so strong and so sufficient that uh, uh, the silk thread should be holding the caterpillar nicely and firmly and it should be covered completely until and unless that happens the silk worm won't rest and it will be weaving continuously so once the cocoon formation process is finished it takes almost two to three weeks for the caterpillar to turn into a pupa and from the pupa a silk is formed. Once a silk moth is formed, within two three weeks after the formation of the cocoon, the silk moth comes out of the cocoon by breaking the silk threads. So here you can observe the silk moth coming out of the cocoon and you can still still see the pupa stage attached to the moth slowly till come out of that shell too so in this process of struggling the wings gets stronger and a lot of silk threads get damaged and the continuity of the silk misses so that is the reason this stage is generally used in order to boil the cocoons So you can see here the pupa stage is still attached and eventually the silk moth will come out of the that pupa stage too. And you can see the color of the silk uh, cocoons are a little different. So it depends upon the species of silk moth also. So this is a young silk moth which will, which will fly away within a short time. So this is the life cycle of a silk moth where you saw first the, from the egg stage the newts will hatch, the newts will undergo four different mouths and they will become adult caterpillars or silk worms and they start 
forming their cocoons and finally they will come out as silk moths they look like butterflies but they are not so these silk moths are called by the local sericulture farmers as chilakalu and the species of these silk moths is uh, sorry the scientific name of the silk moths is bombyx mori and these cocoons are called by the local farmers as pattukayalu right eventually as the pupa stage also gets lost the silk moth becomes a uh, tiny right so now we finished the life process of the silk moth or the life cycle of the silk moth story so further i wanted to show you the process of silk manufacture in industries see the the rearing of these silk moths in order to produce a silk from their life cycle is called as sericulture so in sericulture the silk moths are reared eggs are reared uh, or oh, everything all the steps of this life cycle is useful in the sericulture process so now we'll proceed and observe the process of sericulture these so here you can observe uh, lots of silk moths who recently came out of their own cocoons now the sericulture process is little easier to understand these silk moths are generally reared in order to uh, produce eggs in order to produce make them produce uh, lots of eggs each female silk moth has the ability of uh, uh, laying almost 500 eggs in a single go and later it dies right so uh, in order to make them uh, lay eggs we use white colored sheets with markings and this is how some this is how the eggs look like these eggs are called as seeds even in case of uh, even in dharmavaram of anantapur district you will find this egg selling centers or seed producing centers so these are the sheets in which the eggs are laid right So almost there will be five hundred in number. When later, if at all they are removed, you can see the eggs have they were. And uh, after hatching, the eggs will form the silkworms, and uh, and from the silkworms, later cocoons will be formed, which are called as patukailu by the local farmers. And each silk, uh, each silkworms cocoon almost gives us a uh, lots of miles of silk thread, and it will be a continuous thread. so after this the cocoons are generally boiled and the pupas are killed inside this process of boiling the cocoons in hot water uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes or sometimes 3 minutes is called as stifling so in the stifling process uh, when the cocoons are boiled with hot hot water they generally the pupa dies then almost 50 threads from different different cocoons are taken and all these threads are reeled and twisted into a single thread while this stifling process happens harmful vapors come across come out and it is even harmful for the workers who are involved in the stifling process and as they are constantly in touch with the silk fibers they also get some skin rashes and other skin infections also so the stifling process is a little dangerous process Once the stifling is done the cocoons can be stored for a lot long time actually if you are not stifling a cocoon the silk moth can come out at any time after 2 to 3 weeks and therefore uh, farmers who are selling the cocoons will sell them within 1 week if they are not stifled if they are stifled they can sell them at any time generally cocoon markets you can find in uh, uh, hindupur uh, and madanapalli in all such areas you can find the Uh, cocoon markets where you can go and buy the cocoons to start your own very own sericulture and there are also uh, places where seeds that means eggs are sold or else silk moths are sold say for example in greenages silk moths are sold and uh, seed producing centers eggs are sold so in at any part you can start the sericulture in palam near of the chittur district you will find all the steps of sericulture happening So now the stifling process is going on.
and the stifled cocoons are separated now. After the stifled cocoons are separated, it will go for the next step of reeling and twisting where the exact silk thread uh, is extracted from these cocoons. And you already have observed while a silk worm is weaving its cocoon, the silk thread is very delicate. Such delicate thread can't be uh, woven into a fabric. So almost some around 80 to 50 threads from different cocoons are taken like this and they'll be attached to a twister. Once they are attached to a twister, the twister will twist all around these 50 threads into a single long thread. So you can see the process of twisting here. The cocoons are getting twisted. That means uh, the single delicate threads of these cocoons are taken by the twisters on the top. And the twister twists all these threads into a single long thread. As the local farmers don't pay much attention to their own very health, uh, they are generally suspected to skin infections respiratory diseases and this type of silk production is also called as himsa silk which is opposed by mahatma gandhi and he himself gave us a method called ahimsa silk production where we'll use the cocoons which are uh, use uh, which uh, from which the silk moths already came out so here in this method you can observe how twisting is being done twisting after twisting happens the single thread is being reeled around the reelers these are the reelers on the top so as the threads are very delicate you're not able to see it but now uh, in this method in this uh, video clip here at this very part you can observe light threads which are being twisted and once the reelers are filled with the threads of silk then this silk is generally spinned onto this parts so th these threads are generally added to the big spinners where the spin spinning process happens so spinning process is nothing but making the thread into a bundle right so here the reeling and twisting process is happening and this is the spinning process where large yarns are prepared. Yarn means a bundle of fiber. Okay. So silk bundles are formed. Threads are being rolled into a big yarn which this step is called as a spinning step. This is the yarn of a silk fab fiber. Which is, re, uh, uh, which is taken out after the spinning process. Then the last step is the weaving process. In the weaving, there are two warp threads which are arranged longitudinally. These warp threads are lifted above and below so that uh, a weft can be woven in between them. Here you can see harness. Uh, harness uh, is the frames that will be lifting the uh, warp threads above and below. See here you can see two harness frames which are lifting the warp threads above and below. Here you can see this person, uh, here this is a reed which will pull the, uh, pull the weft thread towards the sari. Right, so this person is using a shuttle which is a big needle.